Welcome to the first release video for Chasm Workspaces. Version 1.12.0 is a very exciting release packed with new features and it marks the first release where we transitioned from a target 6 month release cycle to a 3 month release cycle. First up, we have an all new user dashboard design that really makes our user interface second to none. The admin UI remains largely the same, but you can expect the same kind of updates in the future release. Chasm Workspaces 1.12 now supports providing users with access to arbitrary servers. The servers need to support RDP or Chasm VNC, which means that Chasm now supports Microsoft Windows. These servers can be fixed or they can be auto-scaled by Chasm. Servers can be pooled, allowing Chasm to treat the pool as a single workspace and load distribute users across the server pool. We developed an optional Windows service. If installed, the service provides users the ability to upload files to the desktop and download files from the desktop. Administrators can now add links to a user's dashboard. Here I've added a link to the Chasm User Guide documentation. Because we've added support for arbitrary VMs and links, we've had to rename images in the admin UI to workspaces. We will be releasing another video that covers configuring workspaces to provide access to Linux and Windows VMs in detail. Chasm utilizes Apache Guac to provide translation of RDP to native HTML5. For Linux-based VMs, we highly recommend using Chasm VNC. The end-user experience when using Chasm VNC is going to be much greater than if using RDP with Guac. Speaking of Chasm VNC, we have made tremendous progress on the rendering tech. This update sees vast improvements in client-side performance resulting in frame rate increases in the range of 1.5 to 4x over previous versions. In addition, a new lossless rendering compression option is available for local LAN, high fidelity use cases such as gaming, medical, and science use cases that require lossless transmission of desktops and applications. Chasm VNC is open source and is available for many Linux distros for both ARM and x86 architectures. For those gaming use cases, you're going to love the new Gamepad Pass-Through feature. This feature allows users to connect their favorite gamepad to their local PC and then pass it through to the Chasm desktop session. Here I'm using RetroArch to launch Quake using a gamepad controller connected to my local computer. A new feature called CPU Allocation Method allows the administrator to define how Chasm should limit container-based desktop compute resources. The old method was to define a fixed CPU count on the image and containers would be capped at that setting. So a setting of two CPUs would mean the container would have access to at most two CPUs at all times. The new method is called Shares and it allows the container to use 100% of available resources on the host until there's contention. Then it gets reduced to a computed share of the resources. Consider the following example. A Docker agent has four cores and it currently has four containers running on it, each configured to have two CPUs. If only one user was active at a given moment inside a containerized desktop, they would have access to nearly all four cores. If, however, all four users were busy thrashing away, the resources would be shared based on a ratio of cores assigned to each container. In this example, they would all have the same CPU count of two, so they would each get a computed 25% share of the four cores available. This will have a huge impact on both performance and cost for deployments that use large agents. This can be set on each workspace as shown here, but it can also be applied globally in the settings. If you upgraded from 1.11 to 1.12, you will need to make the change in the global settings to shares. But for new installations, the default is shares. Those are the major new features, but many more minor improvements were included in 1.12. Administrators can now force a user to change their password on next login. LDAP users can be prompted to change their password on login if the password is expired or required to be changed by the Active Directory administrator. We've added support for physical TOTP tokens 
for local and LDAP users. The built-in forward proxy with URL categorization now supports WebSocket connections. Several new images are now available. See the release notes for a full listing of new features available on 1.12. Subscribe to our channel to keep up to date on everything CASM.